Great stuff. Speaking of great stuff. It's a, this episode is so great that we have two special beers for this. Or because we want to get boozy. I don't know. Let's, let's do it. So this is, uh, this is called Stone... The first one we're, we're doing is called Stone Woot Stout. We only have one bottle of this. This is a uh, gift from Andrew Erickson of uh, cool. Sons of Air Construction. It's free. Um, ale brewed with pecans, wheat, and rye. One quarter aged in bourbon Ooh, barrels. Smells great. I, 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 was, I, had, I had this earlier and I was like, Matt's going to love this. I'm going to go whoop when I drink it. Gross. Gross. Like a shooter. Yeah. Right? Mm. Right? It's good. Am I right? Yeah. I, like, I like good bourbon barrel. And you're going to like that. Plus the stout. You're going to mark for a stout. You well, somewhere. stout with bourbon is, is really good next time. Like, it's got that wood, that woody hashtag stout mark. Sounds like a campfire taste going on in the back. So, how you doing, big guy? What's up? How's life? Um, it's here. It's happening. It's almost time for the kids to come back from school, so... Yay. Um, when do we come back from school? Or come back to school, I mean. Oh, yeah, I was like... I was like and tomorrow, hopefully, we get Aiden signed up for his new school. So, uh, <laughs> even though... Yeah. He's not, he's not going to... He's going to be going to the Lincourt. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, it's right around the corner. So, from um, the new, the new, the new Casa de whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, it's that's all right. I, I'm training a little too much, so hopefully I train too much. So you make, well, also my boss like I want you to go to this other training. Um, and he's like, but you you look it up and just tell me what which one you want to go to, and they're all six week online courses, or I get to go I go to Michigan for five days. I'm like, I don't think he's going to let me go to Michigan for five days, but I really don't want to do this for six weeks. Because I think it would be like one... Well, you have to do like... Choose. You always have to do eight hours a day for like eight hours a week each like each week of this course. And I'm like, I need to work. So I, I, I can't like, well, give me a second, guys. I, I need eight hours. So I'm going to be doing this well, thing. For, I, you know, I would ask what, I, what, what he's willing yeah, to I'm gonna, for. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to talk to more about it. Because like, I can even do I a five days like, away where I get paid in well, Michigan. Well, I thought there'd be like a bunch. Because usually there's like one in Connecticut and one in New Jersey. And I was like, okay, I could, I could definitely train <coughs> New Jersey, Connecticut, even Massachusetts. Well, Michigan's a great resort state. I mean, we've got Canton, Michigan. Michigan. Have you heard of Canton, Michigan? Is I'm that the one with the water, the bad water? Flint, but I, <laughs> it might be. Who knows? It might be all in Michigan for all I know. Next door to beautiful Flint. It could be in Detroit. I mean, where the water comes from. Like a reservoir. By the way, if, brings if, if it was in Detroit or it was really close to Detroit, I'd go there and become human. I would just do it. That's right. I'd maybe I, get, get a cosplay. Yeah, maybe that, the other correct yeah. answer was Robocop. So, I mean, well, I get some kind of cosplay. Yeah, either way, it'd be a robot. Yeah. yeah. Freeze, asshole. <laughs> uh, dude, we've heard that so many times. Can you please stop? I'll say things that Connor says and try to become human. How you doing, by the way? Like, I'm Connor. I was, I'm the Android unit sent by Cyberlife. Cyberlife? Have you heard of Cyberlife? That was a really good impression. I like that. that was good. I'll shave everything off my face. And I'll, and I'll do the uh, Clancy Brown. Yeah, that'll be good. I, I think we better do it. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Connor. I will do whatever you say. Oh my ass, Connor. <laughs> oh, thanks for saying we'll have to fuck off. <laughs> okay, man. Jeez. Combative. He had reasons. By the okay. way, guys, he had be, try to become a human is probably... I would say it's probably the best... Game of the year so far? Chronic Dream Game. Definitely the best Chronic Dream Game. I think it's the best game of this year so far. Did Horizon Zero Dawn come out this year? No, it came out last year. Okay, then yes, I'll agree with that. Last year. I'll agree with that. Yeah, because Horizon Zero Dawn. It was the best game of this year so far. And, and there's it's been like a few good games. Time. Pretty good. Actually, no, no, it's not. Well, which one was? It's got a worse still is. Boy, got a worse still is. Oh, so good. I, like it just hit me with all the feel to the face. Like ah, yes. I forgot yes. how good that made me feel. Atreus. Um, Boy. Boy. Dad, did I do a good job? It was adequate. It was <laughs> adequate. <laughs> Stab in Dad, the heart. Dad, Stab did I do a good job? It was adequate. Stab in the heart. Stab in the heart. <laughs> Bitch. Oh, there's so many things. Have you you haven't beat that game yet? Because no, there's so many good scenes more. in that game. There's, I really enjoy it. There's one that's my favorite. I won't talk about it because if you haven't played it, and they definitely probably haven't played yes. it. Yes, don't spoil it for the let's, kids. Let's speed up what we got. We got some stuff. You got some you good stuff. Watch, like, I swear. Stuff. I got some stuff today. I uh, well, I'm doing okay because I know you're asking like how I'm doing. I'm doing. This is. I'm gonna start with <laughs> hilarious. And it's making me laugh every time I think about it. Wow. Michael Bay today on Twitter had to deny that he is not making the live action door movie. <laughs> this came about because um, 
I guess a bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, press people, like major news outlets, announced that Michael Bay's company was making the Dora the Explorer a live action movie, <laughs> and so he had to deny that this was happening. Yay! Why couldn't we see this movie? Can we get this movie made, or maybe like yeah, Zack Snyder I, and I, Michael Bay together? Like when you said that, I actually got kind of excited. The map is actually a machine gun called the map, and he just like pulls it out. Ah, the map is just all roided out. Like, so I brought the map, and she slams it down. Uh, I think we just wrote the Dora the Explorer movie, but who's gonna be this the really sexy Dora? Uh, the Dora who's playing Dora. I don't know how old she is, but. I don't think she's like 10, so it's a little awkward because she has boobs. <laughs> and uh, they're definitely not doing it going for the age appropriate door. <laughs> Is it weird that my brain was trying to turn that into a, a title for the podcast or something? Well, uh, this I, I, not, I read, I was reading the, uh, like, they had the, the still, first still door, and everybody's like, I'm pretty sure this is the porn version, and it's not. That's, that's her. She's got to be like 18 years old. And. Well, she's, it's a grown-up Dora, Matt. It's weird. Because she's wearing, like, audience. the regular 10-year-old Dora clothes. Well, Matt, the thing, is, the thing is, Matt, Dora now, the, the Dora fans are from, like, about 10 years yeah, ago. Yeah, they want so Dora to be now. sexy now. Yeah, well, they wanted, like, I grew up with a Dora. gun. I grew up Maybe with Dora. Like, a gun. She's like, Therefore, here's the map. And the gun. I'm the gun. I'm the gun. And, like, the gun tosses. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm the gun. I'm the gun. Like, You're about to get killed, motherfucker. <laughs> it's played by Shannon Jackson. I'm done with that. Okay, we're writing a better version of whatever this is going to be, so I'm just saying. I will kill you with righteous fury. It's my gun. Ha! My, but he's just said in Spanish, too. Uh, Belota, my pistolero. My know. gun. Pistole. Um, yeah. But, yeah, that's hap that happened. Um, now I'm going to go into work and ask one of our Spanish-speaking uh, member, like, people, like, what what is gun, what gun in Spanish? Or this drug, just I used to know. I don't know why I don't know. I said pistolero. I, I lost it. I lost Pistole, I'm going to think it is. But that just means pistol. I don't know what the actual gun means. You know what, Matt? I left my head. I'm judging you. I said pelota. That was ball. I was like, no, nope, nope, definitely ball. ball. Definitely ball. ball. Definitely nope. ball. Um. So I have even better news than what you had. Just a pulse one out, right? Yeah, mm. Batman mm. is back in his underwear. Are you excited for this? So, so Matt, if you haven't heard about this, Batman, like he's he he after he he uh, right. it's kind of a little bit of a spoiler, but it's from couple, like a month ago now. Get over it. Uh, Batman was gonna get married to Catwoman. Yeah, she left him at the altar, and he's like, "Well, might as well pull the underwear back out." He's having this crisis. He's like, "I can't be this same person." Is I there was. a scene where it shows him like pulling up seductively? Like, I snapping hope so. the snap. The, the only the thing Batman. I've seen is like the, the scene of him like you know I'm going back to old school so I can forget about Catwoman. So he has no body armor on and he has a gun. He's busy in tights. He's he just hope I'm not. Nice hope I don't die. I hope he does that. I don't see the gun though. I, I, but I, the underwear is confirmed. Like he's definitely got the underwear back over the pants. Are we ready for this, Matt? Are you no. ready? Are you ready for this? Come on. I like that superhero costumes are evolving to what they, what they naturally look like. Yeah. Like an alien armor. Underwear or? never made any sense. Well, it's I think it's not just to make it look a little different in the drawing. But, well, no, no. The underwear was actually there was actually a theme for that. Okay, tell me. Uh, it was actually because uh, those costumes back then were based on circus strongmen, and circus okay. strongmen and were like that kind of underwear. That's, but also, that's true. That's true. Nothing tactile about underwear. Yeah, no, I mean, we, yeah. But but that's the thing. Like those guys were untouchable by things anyway. There's like a circus Un strongman. It's like a circus strongman. Yeah. Untouchable like Ellie and Ness guys. Also from back then, a state like untouchable like Ellie and Ness. All right, back to underwear, man. Woo. So that's all I had to say about that. Woo! I, I, a big, a big, uh, it's a little stinger for you, that's all it is. Mike, Star Trek Discovery has cast its Spock. How excited are you oh, about Oh, I have this too, good. Okay. How excited are you about this? We haven't done, like, a, a good, I'm pretty excited because, uh, you know, they, uh, they've already cast Captain Pike. Well, uh, it, there's going to be some adventure. It's uh, at the end of the Enterprise first season, at the end of the first season, they kind over. of, they, they kind of say this is happening. Okay. Uh, and obviously... Part of Captain Pike's journey is he's with Spock. He's with a female first officer who's mm -hmm. also cast. But yeah. If you didn't know who that is, I can tell you that too. I, can. I don't. Uh, I'll tell you that after we're done with the, with, your, with, with this Spock. Is it the Alice Eve character? So, let's, let's, so you guys see her boobs. Kind of actually. But uh, let's let's talk about let's talk about Spock. Okay. Let's talk about Spock. It is he's going to be played by Ethan Peck. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't know who Ethan Peck is, I really don't either. But uh, he's, Matt, he was no, on that I do know show. who he is. Guess who he is. He is Gregory Peck's grandson. The iconic actor Gregory okay, Peck's grandson. Right. Yeah. 
So, so actually, he actually has like this these chops, yeah. Because I was, I, that's what I said. Like, who is this well, guy? Well, he also was a main character, I guess, in Halo Four and Five. Uh, so sure, why not, right? Uh, but this is like his first like major ba like major role. Um, oh, certainly, yeah, yeah. So that's why I was like, cool. Who, right? was he looked guy. very Spock like to me. Yeah. He also also if you look at me like, oh, I see Gregor play. Okay. Yes. I definitely see like he gives me like a little bit of Quinto vibe. You know? Okay. Do it. Do it up. Cool well, we'll see. We'll see how he acts. Like, because it's not—it's not about what you look like as Spock. It's like how you how you act, how how Vulcan you can be. You well, know? hopefully he's a dancing scene. He's got those. And like, will, will, he, will he and Mike have a romance? Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. Because she's Vulcan-ish too. Yeah, but then will he move on to her later? Like nothing but love, you know? Who knows? Knows? Who knows? But maybe it's just a precedent, man. Maybe he's just—he likes a little. You know, a little coffee this cream, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're rough. <laughs> yeah! Uh, but yeah, I think it's cool that I like Enterprise kind of <laughs> bleeding into it, and I think it helps really the fan base get on board with it. I know a lot of people are upset with like the way uh, Discovery's kind of going, and, and, and you know, and especially like, I watch the any purist fans. I don't, I don't know. But I think they're doing a great thing. They're, they're, they're really just stretching. They're taking this like really rigid mythos and just stretching. Let's 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 put a beer for you drink. I don't know. I didn't know Cherry that. Jane Sour. I got this for I'm you. Thirsty. I got this for you. Cause Cause I, I, I didn't look glad we need this, and I'll let the sours. But I really, I really like. Um, I, I like them stretching that ri very rigid mythos and giving them a little more breath to it. You know. It's like you're not just like this has to be like this. This has to be like this. That gets boring to me. Well, especially because and that, there's so many stories. You all tell that has been this. done, really. You know, <laughs> and they. I think it's good to just put on its head a little bit. They can go back with that with the the new uh, Patrick Stewart uh, led piece. That's oh, right. Make it so. Yeah, they can go back to the old school with that. But give give speaking, give speaking, something different. Segue. Speaking of make it so number one, you know who's going to be playing Captain Pike's number one. No, no. Let's just say her last name used to be Stamos. Rebecca, Rebecca Romaine. Romaine. Yes, yeah, oh, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's back, and she'll be playing the number number. I didn't, didn't give her a name yet, but but uh, Rebecca Romaine announced it on her Twitter. Um, you know, she'll be right. the, the number one under Captain Pike, uh, which, which actually goes along with the canon because in uh, in the original Star Trek, uh, the the first officer was a woman. So, so I like that. I like that they're kind of sticking the cannon on that as well. Um, and uh, Rebecca Romain? I, I like it's Rebecca Romain. I think yeah. that it could be good. Uh, I, there's nothing bad about either of these castings just from reading the Ethan Pack stuff and from looking at them. I mean, obviously he's got some stuff on his belt. She's definitely got some stuff on her belt. No, so she's do it. Recently, most recently did they, uh, that remake of the show The Librarians. Um, and, you know, so she's been, she's still working, working actress. All right, let's see what we got. Show us. I'm killing it. See, I'm telling you, man, drinking more helps. So we're killing it with these segues. Still. Um, I got nothing for this segue, so it's okay. Um, I'm gonna switch, switch, uh, switch gears to um a little bit of video game news because what? Um, WWE 2K19 is oh. coming out. Excuse me, very soon. And you know, there's a showcase mode. Never was there. Stone Cold Steve Austin. You just there, there was a. Uh, you just wrecked it. There was a. Um, <laughs> there was a. Uh, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. There's a John Cena with Word Life. Mode or something, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I must spit you out. The second thing I put the trash in my life, I'm going to wait till you drink again. <laughs> um, but this one is actually a worthy, worthy mode. It is the return of Daniel Bryan. So it's the, the showcase will be... Uh, you play as like a like a beardless Daniel Bryan first, and then you... I hope so. You may be in a little American Dragon action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um... He gets all the way up to the goat, and then he talks about his neck, and he's got to come back from the neck injury. You probably have to... Fight some uh, some matches on the way on the way back. And you just, you're fighting, but they can't put Big Cass in the game anymore because he. So you, you just have to. And... It'll probably be like Randy Orton. Yeah, it's like he's fighting. I Randy think actually Orton. I did see him him fighting Randy Orton, and then he'll make you shake his hand after he touches his penis. That's a thing, guys. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, it it definitely. I I was listening to him talk about it. First of all, the announcement happened in Aberdeen, Washington, at his high his high school, which is kind of interesting. Um, but he, it was definitely uh, worthy of a showcase. I felt there's a lot of good feels in the. Uh, oh, we're talking about Daniel Bryan again. Good. Okay. Yeah, that's like, the good feels of uh, Randy Orton touching <laughs> his dick and making you shake his hand. Because all the writers have to do it. Do not want. Do not want. All the writers. All the writers have to do it. Uh, all the new guys. 
Uh, the best part was this happened on a podcast in 2012, and they just found out about it six years later. Well, because WWE is like buried. Yeah, here's, here's, here's the carpet. Just sweep it right under there. there we go. He's our guy, even though he's way past his prime. Okay. Speaking of way past his prime, uh, Chris Pine and Chris Hemsworth met star, stars of Star Trek IV. Mm. Uh, you know, he's switched to the time weapon. Yeah. Uh, the, the future is in shambles right now because their contracts both fell through and they're expecting yeah. that everyone's contract is it may going not to fall be, through. It may not be made. Yeah. Every person's, they're expecting every person's contract to fall through. So they're oh, just why? completely lowballing everyone. What happens? We'll give you scale. So $1,000 per day. Like, I don't know what's happening. It's like, I got Thor money. See you later. Yeah, he's like, uh, no, I don't need He's this. like, and I'm Steve Trevor, man. I'm Steve Trevor. I'm back in one of I'm, like, I'm in the Justice League now, basically, guys. <laughs> I'm like head of the Justice League. She's going to save the day so I can save the world in this one. Uh, <laughs> Steve Trevor. It's yes. not problematic, guys. Hashtag it's Steve not Trevor. problematic. Uh, <laughs> the problematic Steve Trevor is the name of this episode if we can fit it. That's all I'm saying. No, it's not. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I, I've heard it, I heard it, comp- like, basically, Star Trek 4 is basically, yeah, like, out fucking right dead now. in the water. It's out. Dead in the water. Um, that's gonna be a good segue for this next one, but this next one was the one I wanted to end on. That sucks. No, no, I, I have that too, so I know. Okay. So, uh, speaking oh, of Jonathan Nolan, let's talk about uh, uh, Westworld Season 3's radical shift, Matt. Okay. <laughs> So Westworld Talk season, well, I so so yeah, Jonathan Nolan, real one actually. Lisa Joy had a had an interview recently, and they basically they let a little bit little nugget slip about uh, about uh, where Westworld season three like from between their cheeks. Yeah, and I I was eating up. Ah, give that to me. Eat those cheeks. Give nuggets. me that nugget. Um, cheek nuggets. That's that's, that's good. Um, so they so they both got into talks about their excitement, on, uh, to tell the story of the non-human character arcs. Okay. So, uh, I mean, those aren't the real characters at this point. Nobody gives a shit about the humans, really. Yeah, and they said there's going to be a radical shift from what you've seen on Westworld, and because of, because of this, like they're out in the out, they're in the world now. Like yeah. literally, well, like the a couple of them. Uh, I don't want to get spo- I don't want to spoiler. Uh, but yeah. the, like one of the main characters that is now the opposite. So now just not. watch Westworld. Come on, guys. Seriously. Um, but uh, it. It's already kind of interesting. A lot of people did not like season two. They thought it was a, a lot to take on for them, I guess, or something like that. And people, there's people that it's were so stupid though. Guys, I enjoyed it a lot. It was fun. Yeah. Um, uh, so, so, so what? With uh, Lisa Joy and Jonathan Nolan said about it, it says they they talk about talking about the non-human characters. They say they're existential. They span eons, and that's a fantastic, uh, fascinating level of story to engage in. So, uh, so I mean, they're I, they're kind of opening up to like maybe these guys outliving humans. Maybe these guys. You know, well, I mean, you've already kind of had the experience of um, of uh, Dolores living yeah, in a yeah, long, special life. way. She's yeah. been and she's been alive for a long time, longer yeah. than you realize in the first season, um, which I thought was one of the best story points of yeah. the second season. I thought it was really cool. Um, and so she kind of had this evolution into the, the like it's a lot and deeper like than well, it is. what's funny is Jamie like kind of got it right away, but I didn't, and I think mm-hmm. that actually helped me enjoy the story more because I was just like, oh, I didn't what like she was like no, I, or I, she I saw it like this whole time. Yeah, she's like I saw it from my first scene. I was like, okay, I, I didn't though, and that really got me into it. So like, that just proves women are smarter than men. So you know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't argue with that anyway. So it's fine. Um, yeah, but I was I'm sorry. I, I know it's a little spoiler, guys. I'm sorry, but I haven't talked about this. So I was really excited about it. Um, and and they give a really good interview. Watch Westworld. They give a really good interview about like what their thoughts on season two and, and stuff. But I didn't include them in here just for time issues and things. Yeah. But I really, uh, it, it's a really good interview. It's not, it's up on IGN right now, so check it out. I can't believe I missed that. But don't check out some of IGN's other stuff because plagiarism. I've I've tried to cut all the stuff I took from IGN into a piece that looks that looks like it should be mine. <laughs> but uh, here's another thing I saw today. Um, Marvel's Runaway Season 2 dropping all at once, Mike. All at once. Did so, you finish Season 1? I did. And I liked it a lot. Yeah, yeah I, I enjoyed, enjoyed it. it. I enjoyed Mar- uh, Runaways a lot. I enjoyed it more than I enjoyed The Gifted, actually, to be honest I, with you. I agree with that. Um, the Gifted not was like, a little too up, up its own ass. I didn't think it was bad, but yeah, yeah, it was up its own ass. It was a little slow at times where it's just like, I don't know if I'm supposed to care about this part or not. <laughs> uh, and they're like, oh, then, well, this also happened to this guy. I'm like, I don't and really that kid was that. just so emo. And I'm just like, dude, I, we get it. You it's like my power is, I'm like Omega, but I'm also like, <laughs> Omega, like, 
make like, emo. That, that was like every scene with a like, like, okay, I get it, I get it. You, yeah. It's I like, it. I make bubble shields. Yeah. Bubble shields, bubble shields. Look at me. Bubble shields, bubble shields. Yeah. Like, okay, I get it, I get it, man. Right. Okay. Well, uh, December 21st is when the second season drops, which feels, feels like a long wait, but it's okay. I, I, That's a good Christmas okay. gift right there. Yeah. You know, the whole, keeps get a little binge, get a little binge around Christmas. The gift I'm that down. keeps on giving. I'm so down. That's what I got for but that. It's not called the gifted. If it was the gifted, it'd make more sense, right? The gift that keeps on running away is season two. December 21st. Instead of getting gifts, I got one thing left. Away on I got one thing left. <coughs> warning, warning. Uh, have we talked about that? There's a best popular film category added to the yeah, Academy Awards. I yet? get it. I get what they're trying to do. No, there's there's some implications here that we need to talk about. Okay, let's talk about this. Let's talk about. So, are we just saying that now the best movie, the best film, is now not popular? No, we're saying that the movie that makes a lot of money gets it gets some credit. So what are, are we saying that? Are we saying that we're saying a Marvel movie wins an Oscar? We say, are we saying that be, that Black Panther can win both? It was a great movie. Yeah, but so it was like I mean, fuck a, the shape of water, a time right? of killing or something like that. The yeah, shape of water. That's the shape like, of no, water. but it's all like these fucking movies that like the shape you've of water. never heard of, you've never watched the shape of water, except for uh, fan of the podcast and uh, somebody who works with me, Greg, and he watched all those movies. The shape of water. He watched. He probably he watched shape of water. A lady, he definitely did. A lady fucks a definitely fish. Definitely did. She like, fucks a fish. <laughs> she fucks a fish. It's like a fish. Uh, I'll talk about fucking. Like, is there a lot of fish fucking in there? Yeah, no, ask him. <laughs> like, he'll be like, yeah, there's some fish. Like, there's it was a, like a lady fucking. It was like blue is the warmest color, but with fish fucking. Uh, it, it, it's heterosexual. Okay, man. He's a hero. He's a but I'm just saying, but with fish. He's like a dude fish. Oh, okay. With a dick. Because okay. dick. Okay. fish don't have. Then dicks. it's okay then. Like fish are dickless, but he has a dick, so that's fine. Then. It's obviously better. As than long fish. as you're heteros, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fish dick. It's not thing. He has a quad dick though. So that's the weird thing about it. For word. She's fine with it. Shape of water, man. Shape he's water. actually like a seahorse who just sprays <laughs> his semen into the world. Yeah. And just like. <laughs> Um, I don't even remember. What we're talking about. <laughs> oh, it's the popular, popular, popular uh, movie. Yeah. Uh, I part of me gets what they do. It's like then you'll watch because your favorite movie will win. Um, but uh, I don't know. I don't really. I'm not gonna. I don't care. Well, I, I don't think, really care that Matt, uh, Avengers. L- let, let me were let wins. This, let me put this in the context read though, Matt. Okay. The Academy Awards happens on the best network ever, ABC. Get the implication there, Matt? Owned by Disney. Yeah, so they're trying to get more movies in. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I got it. I got yeah. it. Yeah, come on, guys. They're trying to get their... Oh, I actually have one more now that you said that. Thanks. Come on, Thanks, guys. thanks, thanks. Come um, on. But, whatever. I have one more, too. Uh, besides the one that we both have. Okay. Well, this one's about James Gunn, because speaking of... Sorry, okay. Uh, I guess there's... After James Gunn got uh, got dumped by uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, he's unfortunately. Why? Stupid. Stupid. Disney. Um, He's been getting just like... A Bukaki level of uh, yeah. of of offers now. He's amazing. amazing. Everybody wants him to do one of these DC superhero movies and Doom Patrol. Could he movie. fix DC? Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean he could. I, well, I, Joss Whedon went over there. And I, did not fix I it. don't think DC is broken. You I saw do. Wonder I Woman. Do. It is not broken. I think it's broken. It's I just think the fact. That I think the they are picking the bad universe people. is broken. That's the problem. Sure. I will, you put Wonder Woman in that in that Just League movie, <coughs> and she's an afterthought, and not. But that's also because Zack Snyder smashes toys. Yeah, Lydia's has But do we think toys. that James Gunn can fix like the Justice League or something? Like if they if they give him his own isolated thing, yes, definitely. They give him give him Justice League. Do Dark. you think? Give him Justice League. Dark. There'll be a Chicago song, maybe, and uh, maybe like Bread or America can do a song on the soundtrack for the Justice League too, or uh, we can Man, get Zack Snyder's out. He's out. No, but I'm saying we're getting James Gunn's music. We're not doing bread. We're getting, we're we're getting like an awesome mix for the Justice League now. If we're doing, if we need more. We need a little more jazzy stuff. I think. Really, I mean, if but we also need Chicago should, then. We'll do we'll twenty five. We also need a group that's gonna be worth that though. You can't just do like the Justice League because it's like okay, well they're just gonna want hard rock for that. You want to do like a like well, a cool off brand group. That's what Zach Like like Guardians of the Galaxy. Exactly. Okay, what's a cool? I don't want to say Justice League Dark. I don't want to say what, what other off brand group do we have for DC. That's, that's hard. I mean. You could do something kind of off book like the like, Justice Society. Where you make the Justice Society, Star Man or Star Girl. You, you know, you could have the original Green Lantern. Who, you know, who maybe also they could do a, a gender. I'd say a Legend, a Legend of Tomorrow movie, but an, an LBGT character in, in uh, Alan, uh, the, the original Green Lantern, Alan mm-hmm. Wood or something like that. I can't remember. Alan Wood's resolution. Uh, Alan Parsons, the Alan Parsons Project. Uh, I, I, yeah, there's, there's. 
Hunter Johnson. I see. I just I'm not a big fan of a lot of these teams. They could do something with um, the but Midnighter, it, maybe like the Midnighter and. Uh, uh, I, said, I don't know if the Midnighter is a popular enough character. I love Midnighter. None of the DC yeah, characters really are though. They, they, like they make their money off their big three. Like, yeah, that's the no. thing. Like, and they kill their big three. So. Yes. <laughs> like like where Marvel makes. Technically- what if they reboot it with James Gunn doing the new, a new Justice League? Matt Reeves is Batman pick. With uh, a new Superman and uh, Matt, as we talked about last week, Bat- Matt Reeves' Batman pick is still Ben Affleck. No, 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 no. He said he wanted to go younger. He did, but they're not. No, ben they're Affleck's still signed up. No, I don't know about that because he doesn't want to be in this. He's wanted to get out for like two years now. I, I don't think they they can. Still I think Daniel Radcliffe has a better chance than uh, <laughs> that'd be great. He's like, oh, I'm, Actually, I'm Batman. You know I think Daniel Radcliffe would be a good Midnighter. To be honest with you, sure, because he's in shape. He's like, like that kind of like a little bit of a more wiry dude than Batman is, and I think he could pull off the 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 comedy better. I think. I, I just wish I could think of like a good comedy team for. I mean, you could do like like the Challengers of Tomorrow or something, or um the uh, Super Friends. I mean, that'd be fun. Like, backpack. That could be like a funny tongue-in-cheek thing, but I don't think they're gonna. They wouldn't do something like that. This is like a Taika Waititi to do it instead. And he's like, "Hey, I put my own character in here. Hey, look, it's me. It's a guy that looks weird, but he has my voice, and I'm doing a voice. Hey, good shape. A fast shape. Okay, just be core. Just be core again. <laughs> he's like, "Just be core. I'm in this one now. <laughs> I've connected the universe. He's the like, Alan again. He's the one who brings the Alan again together. The, the amalgam. The amalgam. The amalgam together." Speaking of amalgam, I just want to get out of this. Uh, Fallout 76, man, have you seen some of the videos for this? It looks pretty cool. No. Like, they have a, a really new skill system for it. Okay. A uh, leveling system supposedly is near infinite, but what they're doing is uh, they're they're um, giving you... Look, I need I need some power to meet up the super units. They give you, like, so. 50, like, 50 levels of points, and then they give you, like, other stuff after, like, an Elder Game kind of thing afterwards. Okay. But what they're doing... With the skills is that when you level up, you you pick a skill to add to one of uh, the, the special stats, and it, it comes in a, a card that you can select from like several cards that they give you a choice from. Okay. Uh, so so for for instance, one of the ones they showed the guy selected he, he selected to add to his strength attribute, and it gave him a card that gave him plus ten to melee, ten percent to melee hits. You know, kind of a basic one. Uh, but what happens is that the cards know. get fucking insane. First off, charisma, because charisma, there's no NPCs, so you don't need to talk to NPCs, so you don't need charisma. Mm-hmm. Charisma is like a weird team stat that basically lets you share stats uh, from charisma and other stats with your team. So like if you, if you group up with people, you can like give them your stats, which is kind of cool. But, so like if you, like, like you, you're, you might have a charisma stat that like gives you plus 10% to team... To team melee hits, and but you can only use it when you're in a team. So like you can't use it on yourself. So it's not cool points though. But but they also have like ones that like you. Uh, one that I saw was you can use stim packs on people. So you usually use stim packs on yourself, but in the, the disc card lets you use it on people. So you could be a healer for your team. You could actually if you had, just take your stim packs and jam them in other people. Um, the another a cool thing that might that that actually no actually there's no downside to this. It's just cool. Um, every, th- every, like, second or third level after, uh, and this is Todd Howard kind of, kind of, like, dithering about it when he's talking dithering. about this. And he's like, oh, well, maybe a second or third level. Uh, a- after, uh, level six, I think you said, level six or eight is what I said, um, you get basically a pack of cards, like a, like a foil pack on your screen, you open it up, and, and this, these are cards that you can't buy, so it's not like a, like a, like you're buying, I bought, like, 50 of these packs, and now I have all these things. Every you oh everyone gets these when you level. Yeah, there's no uh, microtransactions in this game. Yes, yeah. and, and part part of that is like they give you these packs every other every other or every third level. Is what he said, um, and it, it basically gives you stats uh, uh, perks you could not get uh, using just the level up system. So so what you do is you, you pick a, a perk to level up, but then you might then you open this pack and you might get something better, like either a better version of the perk. Or just really weird, and so something that you might not use, uh, but but like you're saying, like oh, I might want to use that in a couple levels. Like they actually give you stuff that's like too high a level for your your stats too. So you'll be like, sure. oh, like I'll level up my charisma to get this cool thing. 
He also because it's a survival game, it also gives you a pack of gum because he's it's like it old like tops cards where they give you a pack of gum. He's like or a stick of gum, where, and he's always like, "Oh, the stick of gum will give you nourishment." Your character, so your character gets nourishment when they get the stick of gum, and then they, no, their hunger so, level goes. So they just give you a couple rads, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, okay. So, but the other cool thing that is really random and weird is that if when you get a certain number of rads in your body, you get a mutation, and the mutation is just random and fucking weird. So, like the the one the guy the one that the other guy that was oh, not Ted Howard was talking about was like. He's like, I was just running around getting rads, and I got a bunch of rads, and then I noticed that when I hit, hit jump, I was jumping really high. Uh, and then I saw so I, 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 but I also noticed I was encumbered when I was not jumping. I was like, I was like, couldn't move very fast. So I, was, I checked my thing, and I got this, this rat, this uh, leg or something? called bird bones. <laughs> yeah, so, so he could like fly. He jumped twice as high, but he had like tw like half as much carry weight. <laughs> and 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 so. Oh, shit. So now, not only that'd be, that'd be dangerous. Not man. only can you like swap those out, whether you can like kind of cure yourself with the rads and they go away. But there's also a perk you can buy called Bleach DNA that basically keeps those. So if you get like one you really like, you can actually put slot the Bleach DNA one thing and keep that mutated perk. But otherwise, it's just a random weird thing you get. And, but there's also there's also a Crimson nice. one that lets you share your mutated perk. So if you get like a really cool one. You can share with other people in your party. If and bring out bird bones and jump around. Yeah, and we're just getting bird bones, jumping jump around. around chickens. Yeah, so it, it looked fun, and like, and like the obviously, like the, the character creation looked a lot like Fallout Four. Um, the world looks like a cool, like a cooler version of Fallout Four. Honestly, it looked look cooler than Fallout Four. Fallout Four is kind of boring. Uh, but um, boring. You heard it first from this guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, the mods make the mods make it a, a lot better, but uh, but like vanilla vanilla Fallout Four is a little boring. <sighs> Uh, but like some of the stages look really cool, and and I, I love that you can you're gonna be able to do private servers and stuff. So sure, definitely. Keep it on me. There'll be a school France private server. Yeah, you know what else is really cool, Mike? This dun, last dun, thing. Dun, Finally, dun, 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 Uncharted dun, the movie dun, dun, has dun, dun. a script. Sean Levy, the director, was talking about the movie. Somebody asked him how his projects are coming along. I guess he has another project. I can't remember what it was. I didn't write it down. Um, but uh, he also directs Stranger <laughs> Things. Uh, so, but he, he had another movie project come along. He's like, this Uncharted movie is much closer to being made. Uh, he's like, they have a full script. They still have Tom Holland attached to it. Um, and obviously they still... Which at this point, let's do it. Let's do it. Make it young, make um, so the only thing we don't have right now is a schedule for the filming. Yeah. Um, but... Yay! Uh, I'm ready for this. I like every. A lot I'm of not people, getting my hopes up, but I'm. I'm I talked to a couple people like this, I'm but you know what? Tom Holland is a good actor. He's a really yeah. good actor. Yeah. Um, and I don't mind it starting young and keeping him on sure. this franchise sure. for 20 years sure, sure, if, gonna, sure. if, if he's going to do it and move him up. Cool, level him up. You know, who, who do you think is going to play Elena? Man, who, who do you want to play Elena? No, she won't Zidane. be in this first one. Zidane? They'll probably Zidane. have. They'll probably have another. Uh, like girlfriend interest, love interest in the first one because Elena won't won't will be around yet. Oh well, she. Oh well, she might be. I don't know. Do you think but who Ron, who should be Sully? I was thinking Harbour. David Harbour. David Harbour, like a surly motherfucker. David Harbour, like like yeah, I'm s yeah, but he, he's, he's, he's first of all like so the much Stranger more Things connection. Uh, I th he could play funny because he does really well in like talk shows stuff like that. He's always pretty hilarious. Sure, he's, sure, sure. He's kind of. I like, think he's playing Hellboy. He's which like is a lovable funny. dad type. I think it'd be great for him. I like being Sully. I think he could pull off that role. He's already got the mustache. We're good. Get him in there. Just just gray it up a little bit, maybe. No, because he won't be that old yet. Because it'll be young Nathan. So we can do that. Yeah, do it. David Harbour, guys, remember this, okay? So when remember this prediction? So when it happens, when it happens, you can be like, "Oh, this is this guy. This right guy, here. he needs some royalties right here." This guy was fucking weird looking, Rowling, Rowling, Russell, Russell, Walmart brand. Listen, just because you're going for the shirt you wore the most on this podcast ever, okay? No, I think I, I, it's I'm the most in this podcast. There's somebody right there. I should be there. Hey guys, thanks for coming. Thanks for enjoying this with us. Thanks for coming. Thanks for enjoying two beers. Woo! Very good. Stay classy, guys. Good night, Phil. Good night.